Okay, welcome to a first video in a little series about building an API with Node. So the question was asked in the live chat. This is, by the way, you're probably watching this as a recorded archive, but in the live chat, why would you want to make an API? And so, you know, I mostly, right in the comments, I'd love to hear why, what your idea for an API and why you would like to make an IP, API is, but there's, there's a couple reasons that I think I could kind of start with here. Number one is you have uh, data and you want to allow other people to use that data. So this is a way of you kind of making a transaction, a sort of handshake and saying like, hey, there is this means for you to access this data and I intend for you to be able to do so. An API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's a way for two, it's a way for two different applications to talk to each other. So there's the applicant, we're gonna build an application, a node application um, that has data or something associated with it and it's uh, other people, other applications will be able to talk to it. So that's kind of the main reason. Now there is sort of this scenario, which I also am gonna show you with, you might be making an API for one person in the world, one wonderful singular person, and who is that person? It's you, <laughs> right? So there are lots of projects where you're writing a front end, a client side JavaScripting, you're making pretty pictures and drawing text and all sorts of interaction stuff on the page, but you need some server side stuff to connect, to download images, to run long, complicated processes to use other node packages. So you might make an API just for your own project itself. And actually, that's what we might see in some of the examples I have to show you. So that's kind of, number one, you might just want to, you know, you, you, you have something and you want to allow other applications to connect, or you might actually want other things being mainly yourself. Okay, um, so uh, hopefully, <laughs> That made someone sense of why you might make an API. But really, you know what the answer to that is? Let's try to make an API, talk about it, get to the end, and um, hopefully some creative ideas will emerge in your head as you're watching these videos. Um, okay, so first I want to point you to this web page, which is part of the course. Um, the things that you will that need before you're watching this video is what is node.js and what is npm. So you're gonna to need to have both of those things downloaded and in this video I'm going to start with adding express. So I wanna use this express package which is a fast, unopinionated, minimalist web framework for node.js. So first of all, I just love anything that says minimalist because Programming gets like really complicated and looking through documentation and APIs is like ugh. So it's nice that what a lot of the things that, I'm, that I wanna do in this application that I'm going to build is like, oh, host some files or oh, receive a query from a user and, no, and Express is going to have a simple function for each of those as opposed to kind of writing all the code for that in raw nodes, so to speak. So I'm gonna look at my directory where I have the project and all I have is uh, two things. I have a server.js file, which is actually, that's where I'm gonna put my JavaScript code, which is empty. And then I have this package.json file, which you can make with npm init, but I already have one there. That's your configuration file for the project. And there's lots of important details about that if you go to publish your thing as a node package or an open source project. But for now, we can mostly ignore the contents of package.json. Um, and I'll come back to it maybe another time. Um, so you can see what's in it. It's just like a little bit of stuff saying like, hey, this is the name of my project and this is the version. But what I wanna do is go and grab this and now install Express with this project. So I'm gonna say, and I'm, you can see I'm in that directory and I'm gonna say npm install, oh, I'm actually, I'm just gonna paste it in there. npm install express dash dash save. Ah! Oh, I have an error in parse. Uh, so I, I, I messed up. I have an error here. <laughs> I, I wrote that package. That, so by the way, if you get, if that happens to you, <laughs> let that happen. Um, trailing comma. I got an error in my package.json file. So that should fix it. I'm going to say clear and try this again. Oh, yay. That looks much better. So you can see it should, now I should have a new, a new directory called node modules. And you can see, oh, there's all this stuff installed in there. I'm just going to have to trust that express installed correctly. So let's make sure everything's working. I'm going to go into my server and I'm just gonna say console.log server is starting. And I'm gonna say node server, server is starting. Great, so a node program is just like a program that's written in JavaScript that just runs on your computer and it runs without graphics, without a window. And actually there's a lot of stuff you can do with node. I mean, 
you know, I should probably really learn Python one of these days. But I use Node a lot to do a lot of batch processes on my computer. Like, oh, I could just write a little Node program to rename a whole directory of files, or I can do, you know, make a request to some other API and download a whole bunch of things. So, you know, Node is something that you can just forget about web servers and APIs. You can just use as a little programming tool to try do a bunch of things for yourself on your computer through code. But what I want to do, the first thing I want to do is create a web server. And by web server, I mean something that opens up a port and allows browsers to connect to it. And this is very easy with Express. Now, I have most of this documented on this page, so I'm kind of going to go and kind of copy paste some of the like pieces of code. The first thing I need is uh, I need to say var express require express. This is like an import statement. Import the package express. I want to be able to use express. Now, the funny thing about this is I get require express, I get this into a variable. This whole package is actually a function. Express is a reference to a function, and I can execute that function. And that's what I'm going to do here in this next line of code. I'm going to say app equals express. So I execute express, and suddenly I get this web application. This is what I mean about how great it is to use express. It's doing all this stuff behind the scenes. And that the first thing I can do is I say, hey, listen for incoming connections. So I'm going to say server equals app.listen port 3000. Now there are various default ports that servers were, will use, but since I'm just doing all of my testing, you know, this diagram that I have over here of this idea of a server and a client, right now all of this is happening on one computer. The server's on the computer, the client is that computer itself. And that might actually, for a lot of projects, be all you need. But at some point, you also might want to deploy your server somewhere else so that other people could connect to it. And I'll have to make some videos about that as well. Okay, so now that I'm listening at port 3000, um, I, can do, uh, I can do a few different things. So one thing, let's just run this. Server is starting. And you know what would be nice? It would be nice to like add a little callback here. So I'm just going to write, I'm going to add something called function listening. And I'm going to say console.log listening. So I just wrote a little callback so that, and, and actually, there, there, the reason I'm adding this into the code is there are a lot of things you can do here. You can get the host address and the port and various things, but most of this stuff is unnecessary for what we want to do. But I want to at least sort of see this callback that it's working. So I'm going um, to run this again. Server is starting, listening. OK, here we go. Now, uh, so let's go to localhost. 3,000, this is where my server is. I'm going to look at the little web page I made. Oh, cannot get anything. So there's nothing there. But you can see that this is working, because at least I got the message. I'm listening, but I don't have anything to give you. right? The Me, the web browser, right now made a get request to the, to the server. And this is kind of an important concept. So one of the first things I might do, although this is a little bit unnecessary for this idea of an API, but it's kind of worth exploring right now that we're going through this Express stuff, is I can use an aspect of Express to host static files, meaning I can make, and this, this idea of uh, uh, this word public in there is something I could make up. So I could call this website instead of public, public being a kind of standard thing. This is saying use out of the express package its ability to host static files, HTML files, image files, movie files, all that sort of stuff. So what I can do now, if I go into here, right, into my project, what I want to do is create a folder. I'm going to call that folder website, which is sort of a silly name, and I'm going to put in that folder a file called index.html, and then I'm going to say, hello. So in that file, it says, hello. OK, and then, uh, <coughs> I don't know why I'm speaking in that voice. Uh, and then, I mean, I do know why I am, but I don't know why, why I am, why I am. Anyway, now, if I hit refresh. Now, first of all, I've got to restart the server. So here's the thing. There's actually a really nice tool. You notice how I have to like stop the server, restart it, stop the server, restart it every single time I change my code. There's a nice little node module. <laughs> I'm sure this is, um, which um, 
called NodeMon. And NodeMon, like Node Monitor, I think, monitors your code and restarts the server for you every time you change the code. Now, this can be problematic, and you don't always want to use it, but in this case, it would be a lot more convenient. And dash G means I want this package. This isn't a package associated with this project. I want this as just a global tool that I'm using on my computer. And this probably is going to fail. Oh, but maybe it's not. I'm feeling hopeful now that actually this is going to work. Yeah, so I got some error permission denied. This is because I, when I'm installing a global package, it's got to go into like user var local bin, some secret place on my computer where I need special permission. So I'm going to say sudo for super, super, super do uh, npm install node mon dash g. And now I'm going to type in the password here and hopefully this works. There, that seemed to work. Or I'm getting some warnings. I'm getting some things that look scary. Oh, it's doing more stuff. Ah, I think that worked. So I'm now going to say nodemon server.js. And this is working. So you can see that it is the server is starting listening. And watch what happens if I go back and I say, go to my server and I say, um, you know, I make a, just do a carriage return and hit save. You can see here, look how many times it restarted the server. So now I can kind of ignore terminal for a little while and just go from, uh, I can just go from my code to when I make a change, refreshing in the browser. So look at that, by the way. I now see the files that are in that directory website. So this is, this, this is step one. We have now written a web server <laughs> with like barely any code at all. Look, this is like all the code for the web server. And incidentally, if you've ever seen me or do something like this, like often I'll run a web server on my computer by just saying python-m, simple HTTP server. That's running a web server. There are lots of other tools. There's um, a node HTTP server. There are lots of tools that just make a web server that hosts files. This is what we have now done. Um, in this exact program. So step one is completed. We have written a web server that hosts files. In the next video, I'm going to add something to this called routes. So in addition to hosting files, I'm going to allow the user to send information or request information through something called a route, a Restian route. <laughs> By rest and I mean you're going to want to take a rest after watching the video probably. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this one on setting up a basic web server with Express.